What part of the country were you from? I, I came from the Midwest, but I have uh, the uh, genealogy of my dad going, going clear back to the Mass Massachusetts Bay Colony. I'll be. No. I'll I, thought, be. I thought you might like to see it. I meant to give it to you before, and I always forgot. Oh, my husband would love that. Yeah, his family were all big, big farmers, a big, big family way back when they came from Georgia, L&J, Georgia. Yeah. And I, I'm not they, quite they, sure. I'm not quite sure where. I'm not, I'm not sure how we got to where we got. <laughs> yeah. Well, they aren't either, actually. Uh, but they farmed out there. It's just right outside of Atlanta. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful farmland. Yeah. Uh, but one of the one of the sons had uh, TB, and the doctor said, in order for him to live, he has to come to drier climate so actually they came out here to melrose first and wow said, mm -mm, <laughs> we cannot farm out there so from that point then they moved down here and there were 13 brothers and sisters and they all had farms from hatch all the way in to almost el paso and did quite well for themselves. So. Well, uh, Vir Virginia, uh, going back through my grandfather's, uh, my dad's father, um, uh, history, uh, there was a senator from the state of Massachusetts uh, <laughs> in the family. And uh, um, I have no idea how he got there, but apparently uh, uh, that's what the record shows. And uh, somehow uh, I, I uh, went from a farm in North Missouri to uh, Albuquerque. Uh, who would have, who would have thought? Yeah. I'm going through the list, so I'm not trying to be rude to people. Uh, yeah. Jeff Kevin. has signed in. Who? Jeff Weinrich. Okay. I'll, I and, and, and obviously Donna is here. Virginia is here. Uh, the three of us are here. Marcel will be here. He's he's just not quite here yet, but he okay. will be here. Well, he read... Marcel Dijon. Okay. Um, what, what, what's their club? Tier C. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. If you're using my list, uh, he's only listed once, but he signed up twice. So. Well, <laughs> you only get to count once. <laughs> well, I know. Well, uh, I. Uh, uh, or Bob, would you ask Catalina to unmute? Uh, here she comes. She oh, was, there, there, there she is. There she is. Hello. Hello, everyone. Okay. Donette, I'm guessing you had a pretty busy day today. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Bye. <laughs> Balls in the air. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to fill out my bracket tonight about midnight. <laughs> well, it'll be half over by the end, Donette. <laughs> Nope, starts in the morning. Well, somebody predicted uh, Lobos in the final four. Oh my gosh, who's who would be that somebody? <laughs> well, uh, well it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Hey, Tina. Hello. Hey, Tina. Hi there. <clears throat> Do you need them to put their club name on their names? Well, if they would just, when they sign in right now, if they just tell me their club until uh, Ann gets here, then I can, like, okay. take a breather. Okay, Jean Gant just signed in from uh, Las Cruces. She's real grand. And Tina's from that. Metro. Okay. Tina, it just says Albuquerque, but it's Albuquerque Metro. Okay. Well, it says Metro. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, it does? I just see. Oh, Metro yeah. Rotary. I see. <clears throat> Got it. And you got Jeff from Del Sol, right? Oh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do now. <laughs> I don't see him. I don't see him either. His picture's oh, off. Just, I'm on my I'm on my iPad, so I'm not on video. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. You're up. Uh -uh. I will talk with you in a moment. <laughs> Danette, did we get that thing out? We got everything out that I know about. <laughs> okay. And there were a lot of things. Okay, thank you, thank you. Bless your heart. We owe you an ice cream cone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it may take a bourbon tonight. <laughs> uh, ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds gross. <clears throat> Hi, people. I'm caught up. Okay, you got Richard or Bruce? Well, no. I don't see Richard Bruce. Well, he's hiding like Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. Hi there. There's Richard Bruce. Yeah, yep. finally, I, I was struggling with my microphone and video. Well, I know how that goes. <laughs> I struggle with anything that's called computer. You know? <laughs> well, that was my background, so I shouldn't even admit that. <laughs> I think we're, Bruce, with that background, I think we're dumber than the regular <laughs> folks. <laughs> That could be true. Because we assume it's going to work the way it should. <laughs> that is true. Everybody's awfully quiet. I've already got two chats. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's up there? Dan oh, has joined us. Okay. I see. Dan Platt, right? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. And Dick Jones is joining. Okay. And I thought y'all had better security than this. <laughs> <laughs> Letting anybody come in. Well, we let We just charge you later. And there's a Tom. J. There's a Tom J. Tom J. Can you unmute? And tell me what club you're with. Tula Rosa. Okay, thank you. Hey, Dom. Hi, Tom. Hey. How are you? Yep. <laughs> I don't know Batman. <laughs> I'm Mr. Lindsay. No, this is uh, Don Bernardi from the fabulous Rotary Club of Albuquerque. Here's my Don Bernardi. I'm... Right. Absolutely. Huh? There he is. Hi there. 
Hi. How are you, my friend? I'm doing good. Oh, I'm not your friend anymore. <laughs> John Morrison joined us. Who? John Morrison. The Goro. And he's not showing us a video okay. because he's probably got a glass of scotch in his hand. Well, he should should be sharing. Well, all I can say is uh, John's uh, photo looked kind of blurred. So maybe he did have the scotch. <laughs> Hell no, I thought about it. <laughs> oh, God, not another past district governor. Dan Garrison. Hey there. As you join in and do, uh, would you please, I know people are talking and that's okay. Uh, just make sure you announce yourself so we can get you credit. Dan, we'll get you credit, promise. Hi. Well, he's too honorary not to get credit. <laughs> How are you, Mr. Garrison, sir? How are I'm things? doing well, and you? I am doing wonderful. Okay, I see a Meredith. Yes, I'm from Red Reed Russell. Okay, thank you. That's exactly the way I need you to do it. Thank you. And I'm Amy Scanlon from Farmington. That was good too. San Juan County. What was your last name? Scanlon. Scanlon? Yep. Okay. S -C -S -C -A -N -L -A -N. Who's Tom Correct. Walker? Oh, the guy that reads all the records. <laughs> I, I've been checking the registration list about four times a day for the last week. So. <laughs> There's... I see. That. Do I already have Tina? Yes. Yeah. Yes, Tina, I have you. From Metro. Yeah. Yes. yes. Got it. So you have uh, Marcel from Del Sur of Santa Fe. Yeah. <coughs> Sandy Rausch from Del Norte. Uh, and yes. That is. Our very own Ann Scott from Albuquerque. Oh, I can. I can relax. And <laughs> yay. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Hi, Sandy. I didn't mean to blow you off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Arvis Jones. Yes. Uh, I'm, what glad glad you're here. I'm glad to be here. And I'm from the Northeast El Paso. Northeast. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Marcel from Del Sur made it. Where did I go? What a pretty name. Marcel. And there's Janine Kelly. Janine, what club? Oops, Janine? You got your... Janine, I think you're on mute. Sorry, yeah, sorry about that. San Juan County East. Hey, Linda, this is Dan Platt. Do you have me down for Marfa? I sure don't. Do but now. I will. Uh, Jerry, uh, what club? I beg your pardon. Who are we looking for? Uh, Jerry, uh, Jerry? Yeah. what yeah. club? Uh, I am from a tone. Oh, but tone. tone, yes. It's good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. And uh, I got in just by the hair of my cheek. 
Yes. Oh, <laughs> there's always room for people. I uh, will tell you, this is a big class. We're so proud of that, that all of y'all came to. And singer from Albuquerque. Hi, Ann. Hi. <laughs> I know, I feel like you and I are buds anymore. <laughs> we <laughs> take a lot of Zoom meetings together, don't we? Yeah, well, I'll be right back. I'll go get dinner. Okay, we'll let you. <laughs> Okay. Philip Gaudet. Huh? Yes. What club? Me, uh, Moriarty. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, are there any other new ones that are yes. coming in? Alice, uh, and I'm going to say this name wrong, I'm pretty sure. Dukerson? Uh, what club? Uh, Dirksen. Yeah. Uh, what club? Fort Stockton. And Ben Freston? What club? Carl's bad. And Art Thorne. Hello. Uh, what club? <sighs> Art, what club were you with? Silver City. Silver, okay. Oh, you got through. We understood you had, there were some tower problems up there. Well, apparently he lives on the right side of town. <laughs> <laughs> Patty Hennessy from Albuquerque. Hold on. I'm missing. Just one minute. Got it. Okay. Next. Uh, I think that's the last. So that gives us a total count of. I think there were like 38 registered. So. Right. Now. Sonny Kellerman sends her excuses. Her internet is down. That's what we understood. Yeah. There's a tower problem. Thank you, though, for letting us know. Now, are you there? Hello? Yes. Yeah, this is Alex with Club Metro. Can you guys see me there? Or can you find no, me? No, we can't see you. Um, we can Yay, hear hi, Alex. Hi, Tina. I'm not sure what's going on, but. As okay. long as you can see the screen and hear us, that'll be good. Yes, I can see the screen and I can hear everybody. Okay. And it's Alex from... Oh, go say I'm from Metro. Metro. Metro Rotary. Yes, sir. He's my counterpart. Yeah, that's what I just figured out. Great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, well, I think it's time over target. So, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, we've done real good. So, we'll we'll count later. We'll count later. Okay, I think. We... <clears throat> yes, Sorry, yeah. I I will make sure I get go through everybody. Um, make sure everybody is counted. So, okay, all right. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming this evening. Uh, most of you seem to be um, old faces, but then at the same time, most of you seem to be new faces, which is a great thing. Um, what we do here is so important, and you know that because you wouldn't be in Rotary if 
you didn't feel that it was important. I've always said and copied something, a quote from a Rotary International president that said, when you walk in the door to become a member of Rotary, the first thing you need to do is learn about the foundation. And the reason being, I feel so important about that is because the foundation teaches you, especially two of the core values because of the grants and that's fellowship and service. What we do with district grants and global grants is so important. It teaches you how to work in your community on the district side. On the global side, it teaches you to reach out to total strangers. Some of them you will never meet other than by voice, but it teaches you compassion. It teaches you to love a product, something that becomes so passionate with you, whether it be water, whether it be um, polio, whether, whatever, whatever it might be, you become so passionate and enthralled, enthralled with it that never again will your life be the same. I have said over the last three years that I've had the best job. I was governor and that was pretty cool and that was a good job. But being foundation chair, I know what all the clubs do in grants. I know how hard you work for your money I know how hard you work getting assessments. I know what your projects are. I know your passion. And I see your face when you talk to us about your grants. Your face changes. You are in love with what you do. So Tonight, the one thing I would hope that what we teach you and your takeaway is not just with your mind, but with your heart, that what we do in Rotary is so much in tune with giving the service to others and to each other. So with that, we're going to go ahead and start. That's my little piece on what I think that is so important with foundation. Uh, this year, we don't have a great deal of money in district grants to spend. Uh, the man, the big man with the voice will tell me if I'm wrong, but it's roughly about 52.7, I believe, that we will have to give away. That number is because three years ago, not a lot was given. So when we do what we do, it's because of the members. It all goes in a circle. Every time your club gets together and decides we're going to offer because we want to spend all of our money here. Yeah, three years from now, we want you to spend your money here. That's your dollar. So think about that. Okay, we're going to first start on what our stewardship and are you going to start or are you, are you in a position you'd rather move to? No, I can uh, start because it uh, will explain some of the um Okay, I just didn't want to put you in an awkward <laughs> position. Okay. I'm good. I'm good. Our, our yes. stewardship here is Ann Scott. She's from the Rotary Club of Albuquerque. Ann carries a full-time job. She works hard, and yet she finds it in her 
reach to be able to do stewardship for the foundation. So take it away, Ms. Ann. Oh, okay, I cannot share my screen, so I just need to be able to do that. <clears throat> At the oh, very I see bottom? it. Never mind. Yeah. I see it. Bottom. All righty. Let me bring that up. Good. Let me hit play. Hello, play. There you did it. <laughs> and for some reason, that should be it. There we go. Okay. Can everybody see that? I think you can. <clears throat> so um, this is my information. I will include it in the Zoom chat. So that way you can have that as well. Um, but if you wanna use your phone, you can take a picture of that. That's my email and that is my phone number. I do try to get back as soon as I possibly can. Um, but like she said, I do work as well. Um, and I have some trading, especially this weekend, I'm going on trading. So um, I'll be out of, out of the state, but um, that's my information. And you're wondering what is a stewardship, uh, grant stewardship chair? Um, it is the a stewardship is this um, the cornerstone of Rotary Foundation, and I need to move this because I can't read. There we go. To ensure the careful management of Rotary Foundation grant funds and for educating Rotarians on proper and effective grant management. Um, I need to make sure that everyone involved in the grant avoids any actual or perceived conflict of interest. So um, sometimes you might think it's... Um, okay to be part of a grant, but then also be part of that business that is um, actually benefiting from that. So uh, we need to make sure that there is no conflict of interest, there's no um, impropriety um, seen or not seen. There you go. Along with others on the grant committee, and we have some wonderful people on the grant committee every year, um, we create a procedure for resolving any misuse or ir irregularities in grant related activity, report any misuse or ir irregularities to the Rotary, sorry, I can't talk today, the Rotary Foundation and conduct initial local investigations into reports of misuse. If there's any questions or um, um, thinking that there might be some kind of, um, mi not just misuse, if you think that there is a conflict, um, please bring it up to my attention or it could be with, uh, Tom Walker, or it could be with Bob Bernard. And so just let us know. And um, we definitely don't want any of that to happen. So, yeah. so why do we go through this training? So everyone in attendance for this pres um, presentation needs to be credited for attending. So I will be the one that will be checking up with everybody. So look on your Zoom chat and I'll email you personally saying that I have you down for your uh, attendance for your club. And so if I, if you don't get it from me, then I don't have you down. So make sure that um, you do answer that. <clears throat> um, so that's what that is. And let me go to the next one. Club qualifications. And I know Bob's going to be going over this and, but I just, just a quick overview needs to be renewed each year. Um, also a mailing address for your club. And this is where the check is gonna go. Let's please make sure that we get the address, your address, because if we don't have the right address, you won't get the check in time. You're gonna be emailing us and you're gonna be saying, where's my check? <laughs> so let's try to avoid that. Also, you wanna have an address that somebody's able to get the mail. Okay, if you're going to be on vacation and you're the only person that can get the mail, the mail, not good for your club. Okay, so let's really try to get this. I want to have a hundred percent. Everybody gets their checks this year. Can we do that, please? Please, please, please. Um, the other one is your club needs to have be compliant with the IRS. So I I put Bob down, and if I put Bob down erroneously, I apologize. But um, I know that. Um, um, previously, um, Peter Fowley was doing that, but, uh, not doing it now. So I, 
needed to, I, I put Bob, Bob down. So if I spoke erroneously, just let me know. Also, um, you need to be in good standing. Your club needs to be in good standing. What does that mean? It means that your dues are paid to the district and to Rotary International. And if you don't know your club status, you need to ask us. Ask your treasurer. That's the first step. Make sure they sent their checks. And then if they don't know, <laughs> then you're probably not. <laughs> so um, <laughs> let's, let's make sure everything is done so that way you can get your check too. Um, other uh, club qualifications. So some of the things that can trip your club up is not getting your reports on time. That could be district or global grants. And so you need to make sure everything's on a timetable, make sure that it's sent and yeah. it's, it's just done. Um, no less than two club members attend the grants management training. You've seen some of the emails Tom has sent out, um, and I appreciate you getting the clubs that um, needed the minimum people to, to attend, but it's always good to get extra people. If if you have people in your club that you think would be a good fit for this, just have them take the training. And then if somebody can't continue with the grants, then you have somebody else who is and it keeps your club compliant. Um, at least one of the trainees must be a point of contact for your grant because that's the person we're going to contact if something's messed up. Okay. Um, if they're missing the report. We're going to be contacting them. Okay. Um, again, attendance is taken. Um, I'll be doing it to make sure that your club is qualified. And then also there's a district grant agreement that we're going to be discussing in a little bit. Um, the club president and the point of contact um, need signatures for that. So that needs to be submitted. I believe we have it done before that, before they can even um we say yes to their grant so you have to get that done anyway again there's my contact information uh, look forward for my zoom chat message to each one of you to verify that you are attending and at the end of the close today you'll be credited for your attendance any um i don't want to take up too much time but were there any questions i know that was fast and furious i apologize but um, and I look forward to doing, hearing everybody else. I'm sorry, Linda. What we're doing, and I inadvertently forgot to say, is we'd like if you have questions, please put them on the chat. Excellent. Yeah. And I will answer mine throughout the time. So I'm going to stop sharing and I will relinquish the floor. Okay. Um, my bad. Um, I've got to move in too quickly. A few yeah. housekeeping things, and you heard them just a moment ago. I would ask all of you to put your phones on mute. Uh, you have activity going on behind you in, in family asking questions. That's normal. We expect that. But it rings through when the speaker is talking. So please put your phone on mute. If you have questions, we'd ask you to put them on chat. We will watch chat at the end of each speaker. Then we will uh, open up chat then for questions and answers, okay? Then also, I, I just, some things just went through my mind and I had it written right here. Um, I need to introduce uh, some people. Uh, Dick Jones, are you still here? Oh, yeah. Thank no. you. Okay. Um, I would like for you to meet Dick Jones, who is past district governor of 5520. Dick will be replacing me come July 1st. Dick will be the new foundation chair. So this is rather an in-between situation because of the way our MOUs are written. And it it's for your good, actually. Your district 
grants will be written so that everything is due by June. That's on, on purpose so that we no longer have to go through fighting checks. In the past, we're fighting checks about did your check get to district to uh, the district office? Did your check get to RI? And you do know that sometimes some clubs don't pay with a credit card. Credit cards are instantaneous at RI. Everything else, if you do a, a I mean, credit cards are instant. Checks are long term. It can take weeks. So we don't want to hold up the money anymore. And I didn't want to put that on Dick right away, having to play like bookkeeper and call clubs going, did you pay your bill? I mean, and you know, sometimes we've gone into August having to hold checks for grants. So I didn't want to put him through that. So that's why we're kind of doing this different type of situation. But anyway, Dick will be the new foundation chair July 1. Now, I cannot tell you these other positions. So we are giving you the names for June. Um, otherwise, Dick will have to redo that for who will be handling your grant uh, during it's run, okay? Right, Dick? You can unmute yourself and say something if you want. Whatever you say, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, Dick. No, I'm not going to be in charge anymore. <laughs> now, we'll, we're working on putting a team together, and we'll, we'll uh, make that known as soon as possible. Okay. All right. Thank you. And then um, I don't believe Yasser's here. Tom Simon's not here. Um, Jeff's here. Okay. Jeff Weinrich, wake up. I'm here. Okay. This is what Jeff Weinrich looks like. <laughs> That's <laughs> the best I can tell yeah. you. Um, Jeff Weinrich is district governor nominee correct designate. designate i mean are you ever going to get out of that mode dude i'm trying <laughs> 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 no we uh we applaud you and so i wanted you to know that we've got a governor to be 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 um uh, exactly. uh congratulations yeah thank you for thank coming. you Okay, I think that's all of the um, people that I needed to introduce. Okay, thank you. All right. So with that, now it's time to introduce our current district grant chair, Bob Bernard. Bob? Have I lost you? Bob. In mute, Bob. Can you hear me? There you are. For a yep. minute, I'm like, am I saying the wrong name? No, I okay. thought I was after Tom. So I was resting. Oh, no. You're first, then Tom. Okay. okay. Danette, would you bring up our slides, please? Um, I think you're going to share them yourself, correct? I can. I wasn't, but that's fine. It'll take a second. Then, when it comes time, Bob, for to do the um, to do the grant training on Club Runner, I'll take back over. Okay, hang on a second while I get into the right view here. 
Do you want me to just bring it up? If you've got it handy, I've, I've got my note slides up. Is this, is this it? Yep. All right. Well, welcome to district grants training. I will unfortunately repeat part of what Ann Scott said, uh, but I wanted to welcome you to this. And the, let's go back to the first one, please, Danette. I wanted to welcome you to this. And first thing I want you to know is in spite of what you've heard, it is not difficult. We're going to make it perfectly easy for you. Uh, tonight, I'm going to try to be brief. And those of you that have seen it before will note that I'm not going into a lot of detail. But that is because I am going to make available to you all of the detail you would possibly want and more. Um, so let's get into the training. We'll answer questions, as Linda said, at the end. So, okay, so this is the, the process that we're going to go through. You have from now until May 1st to figure out what your grant's going to be and who your contact person is going to be. And once your club has been pre-qualified, We'll op open it up so you can submit your request. Then the grant committee will review it and approve it and tell you it's approved. And then we will ask you to submit your full application and budget. Then we will review that and approve it. And we'll do the uh, final grant calculations, uh, get that approved from RI and ultimately get your check. But the, the main point here is to do the preliminary stuff so you're ready to go on May 1st. Next slide, please. So you need to figure out a project, decide who is going to be the person that I call when I'm in a panic. Uh, we will make the list of your 990 compliance available to you to look at. And let me just see if it's yeah, going to let me click over there. Well, I'm going to try to make it a available to you so you can see it without uh, having to worry about this PowerPoint. But basically you will go to a location, which I'll send you tomorrow, enter your club name, and then without entering any login information, just click on it and it will tell you whether you are compliant or not. And I will tell you now that almost 99% uh, of the clubs are already compliant. Uh, timely reporting. So those of you who have grants from 23-24, your first report is due by the end of this month. And I think there are 24 clubs that have those previous grants. And I think I've so far seen about five reports. If those reports are not in, you will not be qualified. And we need two of your club members to attend training. Uh, I sent you uh, out a copy of the district grant agreement and what will be your best friend is the how to use the grants module. Peter Fowley went through click by click 
to show you how to enter your grants into the grant module. And at the end of my slides, I will show you a little of that. But that is going to be a make it easy for you to go through the grant module. Next slide. Okay, the district grant agreement. We always have this discussion in our club. The president elect, who will be president on July 1st, needs to sign. And then your club point of contact needs to sign. And they need to get that signed document to me by mail by May 1st. This is another thing that will keep your, it will make your club ineligible to get into the grants module to apply for the grant. And we need you to do this in an expedited manner, as Linda described. But I will make sure that when I send it out tomorrow, you'll have my mailing address and email address. And I would also note to you that everything you need to know about district grants is in that grant agreement. And I apologize for it being 16 pages long, but read it. Similarly to how to use the grants module, 35 uh, screenshots, look at them. It's there to help you. But ultimately, if you have any questions, you have my phone number, you have my email address. I'm here to make sure that you are able to apply for a district grant if you want to. Next, please. Okay, grant amount. Uh, Linda talked about, about this briefly. Let me go to a little bit more. Um, I will send out a copy of the uh, spreadsheet that shows your base amount, which is 15% of what you contribute to annual fund share between now and uh, your June check. That amount, well, let me back up. I, I started, skipped a couple of lines. Okay, the base amount is 15% of three years ago of the annual fund share contribution. And we're going to send out the list of clubs indicating their base amount and indicating their eligibility for incentive bonus so that you can see where your club stands. And that will help you plan for a project. For example, if you wanna do a $7,000 project and your base amount is a thousand, then that tells you that your club has to find something more, several thousand dollars more in order to do that project. So you may have to tune down your project a little bit. The incentive bonus is an additional amount of money that will go into the calculation that finally determines what your check is. And it is based on the FY24 funds that you've contributed to annual fund share. And if your club has contributed $100 per capita, so per member, then you will be eligible to share that pot of funds. And the two pots this year are down, as Linda said, 
The first pot, the base amount is 56,700. The second pot, the incentive bonus is 25,700. And those numbers are in one of the documents I sent to you as well. Next slide, please. Now, I was trip, tripped up at pets when uh, we got into a intricate cycle of trying to understand partners. You can have partners. So if you only have a little amount of money, you can partner or as Richard Haas says, collaborate with other clubs within District 5520 to build a bigger grant amount. One club has to be the lead. And if you're considering doing that, just give me a call and we'll work on the details. You can also have non-rotary partners, but you cannot use the grant money to finance one of your non-rotary partners ongoing projects. The Rotarians must have the lead role in management and the direction, and it must be identified as a Rotary project. Next, please. Here's the another look at the life cycle. We really want to emphasize that we want you to finish stage one before May 1st. Uh, so that on May 1st, you're ready to make us earn our salaries and approve all of your preliminary grant requests. Uh, we will respond with any questions that we have and need to have answers to before we get your preliminary approval. And then we will look for your full grant approval. And we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. When, then we will, once RI approves, the distribution of funds that we've calculated and the, and the projects that you have submitted, then we will re send out your check. And I can't emphasize enough what Ann said earlier. Go to Club Runner, make sure the address is current where your club mail comes. We had one check that we were chasing for, I think, close to five weeks last year, trying to find the right address for the check to get to. And we don't want to do that this year. We don't have time. The, what seems to be hard for everyone is the concept of submitting reports. Uh, and I certainly understand that if you have last year's grants overlapping with this year's grants, but let's look at the date for the 24-25 grants. Next slide, please. Okay. The first report for the grant will be due March 31st, 2025. And your reports should include your status of your activities, copies of receipts and so forth. And if there are any questions, I will then send a question to the contact person and we'll get the result back. Now, some clubs want to wait and send in all of the receipts and pictures when they do their final report. 
And uh, that's uh, it's okay with me, but that makes your final report perhaps having a lot more questions than you want it to have. And again, there's my contact information. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen now and we're gonna go into how to get into the district grant module. I thought I was gonna do that, Bob. Oh, you can do that. Okay. Go for it, Lynette. See, we got it backwards. Okay. <laughs> So <clears throat> let me go to one of these screens. On the district homepage, this is Rotary five five point uh, Rotary five five two o dot org. Um, and this is where you're going to come to enter your grant information. When you sign on, it will tell you, see right here, Richard Haas is signed on. So from there, you can go to your information. I'm going to sign out of his and sign on to mine so that I can show you. <clears throat> your member logon looks like this. Point... Um, one is that your member logon is not usually your email. It was assigned to you when you first joined Rotary. If you don't know it, you can say, forgot my username or forgot my password. It will ask for your email address and send those things to you. But your user, that doesn't mean your user logon is your email address. So when you get it, you'll be able to sign on. Uh, wait, fine. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Coming in. When you sign on, it will say welcome and have your name. Okay. So once you're signed on, then you will go to the home page and go into the member area. So it's not on that front page. It's in the member area. And then you can go into grants. So do you see where I'm pointing here that's grants? And I'm going to show you, first of all, that there are tabs below it. My club grants will show you your open grants. At this time, my Rotary Club doesn't have an open grant. But if I look at last year, and neither will yours because we've not put them in yet. Last year, we had an open grant, and here is the grant. So I could open it, see the details of it, that type of thing. Very important to see that up here at the top, there's a next year and a previous year, and it shows you what year it is showing you. So that's, that's important to see grants. The other thing that we're talking about that you need to do by, what was it? May 1st. Uh, I wrote it down. May 1, mm -hmm. you need to submit a grant application, a grant request is what it really is. A grant request is easy because it's just got the project name, the year, which will be 24-25, uh, and then a short description of your grant. This is not where you have to put all your details about your grant. This is just what you want to do, kind of who, where, why, when, and then the estimated budget for your grant. So if you're going to do a grant and you're expecting the district to fund the whole thing, you need to kind of look at your report and see what you're, what you're eligible to get. But if that's not the case and you have partners, you could put like that last one, we had 15,000, but the, the district was only doing a portion of it. So all you got to do is put that in and put submit grant, and then you will get a notification when that is um, approved or when Bob has decided um, that he has questions about it. The other thing that's important is your grant documents. So that's another tab up here under grants is grant documents. 
and you see that you can download you can um, download your grant documents. You can also add your grant documents so that when it comes time for you to add your receipts, you're going to scan your receipts and you're going to upload your receipts into here. If you have a picture and you were in the newspaper, you're going to put it in here. All of your information is going to come to here. So that's, and you will get notified by email. Your lead person will be notified by email when he needs information, when he's approved, when he needs information. And you'll be working with this grant module using this. It's a very simple, um, like, you, like you said, if you have questions, Bob will help you. So what? do you have, uh, well, we're gonna hold okay. questions to the end. Go ahead, Let Bob. Me add one more thing. This uh -huh. is, Grant documents, as you can see, those three at the bottom is the place where I'm going to put all the information that you can possibly need to do this process. You got the district grant agreement, which I've sent you, how to use the grant module, and then the base and per capita, which I'm going to work on tweaking a little bit. And then at the very top, why, for some reason, I don't know why, it's because Tom did it. He, it's more important than the rest of us. Uh, <laughs> Tom, Tom wrote a page and a quarter explanation, District Grants 101, that uh, will help you just kind of get an overview. And I would read that first. Okay. We have worked on this document for a couple of years, Bob. Everybody that has been in the foundation has worked on it as a team. Um, uh, we have meetings and everybody puts their two cents in. Right, Tom? Where's Tom? I'm here. And, and yes, and I think the current version is FY25. Yeah. which I think uh, Bob just sent out. Yeah. yeah, it's this one. Yeah, well, I can't point to it. Yeah. Okay. It's good. It's good. And I think that's enough right now to net on that. Uh, so I think the next thing is... Tell him load. Yeah. Do you want to go to Tom's presentation oh. or Q&A? Let's go to some Q&A. We have only one so far, but let's go to the public and see what they're needing from us. We've got one question, and I think we've already answered it um, from Ann Scott, that Ann Singer, I am so sorry. Uh, so reports are due quarterly. Yeah, approximately quarterly, but it, okay. you have to Kind and of everybody which... unmute, excuse me for interrupting you. Everybody unmute because now is Q&A. Hello, are you out there? Yep. Yeah, yeah. We are. Okay. You, use your uh, electronic hands. <laughs> well, we can only see one page of people, Tom, so. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fatty? So, Ann Singer. Yeah, I have questions. Okay, good. Okay, Anne, did we answer your question for you? I don't know. Show, I show. think our concern is that we had a grant last year, and so we are told that our report is due March 31st. But is that the first report that would be due? If they're due quarterly, I'm confused. Uh, last year's grants reports are due March 31st. It could be your final report or <clears throat> an interim report. Okay, so, so you, that. So the grant, that's all right, Betty. The grants we're going to give out this summer, the first report will be due March 31st, 2025. 
Okay, that's great. My next question is, we got a lot more money than we thought we were gonna get. And so we have done two thirds of our grant, but we have money left. And I'm wondering, do I lose that money? Do I have to spend it before June 30th? How, how do I deal with that? All of the above. Or Tom, that one's yours. No, I'll, uh, I'll take this one. Okay. Um, okay. It depends how much you have. There's a certain amount that we don't worry about. But if you have a great deal of money left over, I would say find something quickly that you can utilize it on that is similar in scope. Get back with us and let us know so we can approve what you're doing. I mean, you cannot put it, say, on a global grant. You can't go off and do a different grant, but we need to know. The only other thing that will happen with that money is if you give it back to us, our eye has closed the books on that. I can't, I can't send it back because they will explode. So all I can do, well, they will, Tom, you know that now. I mean, now that COVID's over, they, you know, they'll take it, but they'll say, Linda, what are you doing? Bottom line is we would have to find another club of similarity that would be able to absorb it in the same time frame. What, what is the time frame? When when you did your grant, uh, the quote, last year, Governor, Governor Linda, could I directly address this? Um, Patty, this is a current year project. You have until June one of not this coming June one, but the next one. So it's almost two years uh, to spend the money, oh. um, and. Um, you have defined what the project is and what the money will be spent for, and you will spend as much as you can. And as uh, Governor Linda said, uh, if there are some dribbles and drabbles um, left over, uh, we we would expect that you would spend them uh, consistent with the uh, project that has been approved. Uh, if you cannot, then you will inform uh, uh, Bob or his soon-to-be successor, and uh, they will attempt to reallocate the funds, as uh, Governor Linda has said. But um, remember, the money is basically two-year money. Uh, and, and the reason that Governor Linda uh, up front explained that uh, why the process is front loaded is we want you to have as much time as possible uh, with your project uh, to get it where it's going to go and do do the things it's supposed to do uh, so that you will basically spend all the money and uh, life will be good for the district because we won't have to uh, reallocate it or um, give it to anybody else or, or the foundation. So, so you've got basically two years. So from uh, where your club stands, uh, you've got a little over another year uh, to, to uh, uh, use the money in the manner uh, that it was requested. So this might be an obvious follow-up question. So I will... Submit my first report. I've spent two thirds of my money. Yep. Not my money, the money, the grant money. And I would then do quarterly reports until I have spent all the money. And then I would do a final report. Um, if if I recall correctly, you will re, uh, submit reports in uh, March and September and uh, within a month or so of whenever the project is complete not to exceed uh, June 30, a year from now. That helps a lot. Excuse me. Yeah, June 30. No, excuse me. 
June 1 of a uh, year from now. And if you're ever in doubt, Paul, we'll, you know, it, we were sending out notification that your report was due. Are we no longer doing that? Oh, they already got March 31st for okay. Okay. last year's grant. Well, I was pretty sure that was happening. <laughs> uh, I see a copy of it. <laughs> so, okay. All right. More questions. You've got a few minutes. Richard. Um, I've just got a clarification with uh, <clears throat> when it comes time to submit the budget, um, we used to always have a little bit of confusion about whether it was just the budget of the, the Rotary Club and the district grant, or if it was the budget for the entire project. For instance, other money that comes in to the project that we raise that goes into the project. We were, we were being told not to submit that information, that it was really just how much money we were committing and how much um, the grant was. Can you clarify, you know, exactly what you want to see in, in the budget? Well, I plan? will tell you what I think, and then the, oh, el my elders can tell you something else. Uh, well, they? <laughs> who, who is they telling you? <laughs> Bruce. <laughs> I mean, I don't, is that your club telling you not to submit? No, that's, that's generally what Rick Akins and I were, were being told to kind of narrow down that they didn't want the budget information from other organizations that were putting into the project. The, the idea mm, is that the budget that you give me is going to show the total income and the total expenses. And I don't much care where it comes from. Okay. So you want the total, regardless of whether it's contributions from another organization or, or individuals, in yep. addition to what the, just, the club is putting in and the just identify it if it's a, a source of money on your income side, you have the club and the district grant and whatever the other one is. Okay. Uh, Governor, could I expand on that a little bit? Well, if yeah, because you're starting in three minutes, so you can expand if you're real short. Well, <laughs> I've been expanding for uh, 74 years. So. I know. Hey, uh, Richard, uh, my suggestion would be that you define the project um, as compactly as you can, if compactly is the word, um, so that you can define uh, what your money went for and so forth. If you define, and, and I understand that uh, we're talking about the nursing scholarships and so forth, the entire project then you have to include all the gazins and gazouts and where all the money went. Um, I would say you define your project to be a subset of the greater effort. Okay. One that is easier to keep track of and properly document and, and so forth. Um, uh, and I think you all can understand if that you your in your project is typically a twenty five thirty thirty five thousand dollar project, but your district grant is only maybe two three four five. Uh, define what you're going to use that money for, uh, and use it that way. And therefore, you don't have to document all this other stuff, uh, largely involving other people and organizations. Um, does that make sense? Yes, and I think you said it much more succinctly than what I was trying to add. So, so yeah. yes, I think that's what we were being told. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, if you have additional questions, like I said, 
put them on chat. I'd like Tom at seven. Mm -hmm. So you've got 20 minutes. Can you do it so that we've got time for questions and answers? Hey, uh, I'm a past district governor. I could, I could do no, at least 20 minutes. <laughs> I will cut you off at 20 after. It's that's indeed okay. my, my pleasure to introduce Tom Walker, past district governor and global grant chair um, to talk to you about global grants. Bob, did I cut you off too soon? Uh, no. No? Okay. Okay. So let's see. Okay. Um. First of all, you probably uh, looked at my uh, uh, screensaver background, and it has a submarine. By the way, that submarine was uh, a mere three years old, uh, a mere babe in the submarine force back then, but it has now been gone for 14 years, uh, which means that I'm getting old. Uh, but when you look at, at uh, the background here, this is what uh, appears as you're coming to periscope depth, looking through the periscope, trying to see if there's any shapes or shadows up there. Um, and why would I use that? Well, the Rotary Foundation is... Um, providing you a window into what is possible and all the things we can do. So you've got my contact information there if you didn't already have it. And let's see what comes up next. Uh, we've talked about global grants and district grants. And um, uh, to be honest, a lot of folks um, can't don't understand the difference between global grants and district grants. And, and what I have on the screen on the left side is the general um, markers of a global grant and on the right side, how that contrasts with district grants. Well, global grants, um, you know, global, um, the size is a whole lot larger. The minimum size of a, a grant project is 30,000. And generally our district grants are in the range of uh, two to 10, but uh, we have um, in the past uh, issued a, a check for $18,000. And again, uh, as Bob described to you, uh, district grants are all about uh, what you have given lately and, and what you gave a while back. Uh, where do we do these things? Well, global grants are uh, global, international, uh, but a lot of people forget that uh, what is international or local to us is from our point of view. We can actually do global grants right here in River City, wherever your River City is. Uh, so we can do them in Albuquerque, we can do them in El Paso, and and, and so forth. As long as uh, you'll see down there, you have the right partner. So uh, location is international or local. Most of ours are international. Uh, district grants are within the confines of the district. And that is a policy that uh, existed before uh, past district governor Dick Jones hired me to be uh, his uh, grant chair uh, goes way back. And the general philosophy is our district, our clubs in our district raise the money and we ought to use the money uh, that's available through the district grant program within the district to do good. Uh, areas of focus, global grants have to have at least one. Um, I would say stay, say, stay with one. Uh, district grants suggest that you might look at areas of focus. That's what AOF stands for, but they are not required. So you got a lot more flexibility with a district grant. Partners, you must have an international partner. Um, and oftentimes in our district, we are the, you know, one of our clubs is the international partner. Um, in district grants, uh, Bob mentioned it, you can partner up with up, up to three other clubs for a total of four. 
uh, how long does a global grant take? Uh, in general, it will take one to two years to put the project together from ground zero. If if you already have established uh, the needs of the community or have rounded up your partners, you can do it in less than that. Um, and district grant money, as I was explaining earlier uh, with uh, President-elect Patty, um, we have a little bit less than two years uh, to use that money and complete uh, the uh, grant. Um, and once the, the global grant is approved, it will go on uh, certainly for at least one year, probably more than two because of all the uh, stuff involved with it. Uh, DDF matching. The World Fund matches our district DDF for global grants. Didn't always used to be that way, but we had a, a cash crunch at the uh, headquarters. Um, the district grant uh, does not, these days, require a match from your club. In the uh, former days with district simplified grants, you know, you'd know you ask for a thousand, which meant that you had to, your club had to come up with a thousand to match it. Right now, um, when you put, put in your application and say, I want $2,000, you don't have to match that if you, if you don't want to. If, if you want to make the project a little bit bigger, you can certainly do that. Um, who approves? Uh, global Grants, the Rotary Foundation, TRF. Um, and uh, Bob explained that uh, the district assembles the uh, various applications from our clubs and then submits it to the Rotary Foundation for approval. So that's why I say uh, TRF and District 5520. So moving on. Um where do I go to get tra uh, training? Um, and if you've been to pets, you probably uh, found out uh, more or less uh, to your uh, uh, in, uh, great enthusiasm or, um, well, anyway. Uh, Rotary has a learning center. They have a lot of uh, training courses, which are pretty good, especially to help you get started. There is a grant uh management training set of courses or 10 of them it takes uh, three hours and 10 minutes the nice thing about those things you can start and stop whenever you want to uh there's a resurf and recertification uh which will help you get back up to speed and uh, something to explain the areas of focus um that's one course for 30 minutes so let's talk about the global grant life cycle and the uh, days before the current system, any grant that was not approved by March 31 was flushed out of the system. That is no longer the case. So what I have on the screen here, and hopefully you can see, is the life cycle. Uh, there is a draft status. And this is often what you see when you go to the by district. You will see you know, projects that have been, some data has been entered into the uh, application system, uh, defining uh, who you are, who your partners are, uh, in general, what your project is, a guess at uh, what the budget is. So all of this stuff, uh, it goes into, into the system. And as you uh, work through it, you will uh, flesh out your budget. You will enter the uh, needs assessment and justifying why you're doing what you're doing. Uh, it's not just sufficient uh, anymore to say, you know, it looks to me like uh, you need a water project because uh, you've got a dysentery problem here. Uh, that may all be true, but uh, the needs assessment actually uh, polls or uh, checks out with the community what they think they need. And despite the fact 
that you may think they need a water project, they might think they need a playground. And uh, if if they think they need a playground, they'll probably maintain it uh, as opposed to the other. So there are a whole bunch of things that go on during that draft uh, status. Uh, and it may take um, a couple months. It may take two years, uh, depending on things. And before uh, you move into from the draft status into authorization, we ask that you work with the Global Grant Chair and the District Foundation Committee to, to work with how much money is available and um, where you are and give us a chance to kind of look at things and see uh, if there are holes and so forth. So, um, and how do you do you make authorization happen? Down at the bottom, and you'll go through the uh, grant applications, you will see a thing that says lock the grant. And what that happens is uh, when you punch that, that means all the data in the grant above that is now can't be changed. And you're asking uh, the district uh, foundation chairs, the district governors, the club presidents, and so forth to approve it. The problem is, if there's an oops in there, we have to go back to the headquarters and ask them to unlock it and put it back in draft status and allow us to fix it. So it is much uh, easier, better, more better um, to uh, do the re series reviews before you punch the lock. Um, and as I said, authorization involves uh, the people with DDF and the club presidents uh, of the uh, uh, two host clubs and so forth uh, to deal with this. Uh, then it goes into cement, cement status. Actually, uh, we just had one uh, inner cement status today. That's Corazon de Ninos, uh, El Paso, and uh, Juarez Campestre. That's the heart surgery on the children. Uh, just entered that. And at that point, uh, the Rotary Foundation uh, basically has up to uh, three months to review and make comments and, and so forth. And there will be an interactive uh, thing between the, uh, the host clubs and and the Rotary Foundation try to get everything right. Um, although it can take longer than three months, but generally uh, three months is a pretty good thing. At um, And once the Rotary Foundation is satisfied, they will approve the grant. And uh, why is this important? Uh, once the Rotary Foundation approves the grant, the DDF that our district and anybody uh, else's district uh, has signed off on will be fenced. That is to say, it will be set aside and cannot be used for something else. Um, and at that point, you will ask your um, partner clubs to send their money in. And once all the money has been received or sent to the uh, project uh, bank account, then the it will be combined together. The Rotary Foundation will wire. They don't mail it. They wire it to the bank account, and you're, you're underway. And uh, the last stage is do the project, report on it. Uh, report is due uh, on the anniversary of uh, the date the uh, funds were released. Uh, and I will tell you that India has different rules and you have to apply with them. So uh, that is the life cycle and this can take years. So the question is, there are nearly 40 people in the room and you're wondering what role would my club play? Well, there are three basic roles here. One of them is the international host. That is the club and the district outside 
of the host country that is responsible for communicating with all partners outside of the host country, just like it says, responsible with the host club for reporting. So that means if the host club did do the report right, you're on the hook for it. And that is a if if you dealt with uh, me lately, um, I I kind of uh, remind people that there's a report coming due, and we need you to work with the the club uh, host club to get that report in because if we drop below seventy percent, that is seven and uh, less than seven and ten of our projects are not reporting properly. Uh, we are in, li in risk of losing our ability to do business with the Rotary Foundation. And that means everything. By the way, they'll still take our money, but we'll lose our ability to do district grants, global grants, and all kinds of stuff. So it's really important that reporting gets done on time. And uh, the international host, uh, if they have the bank, they're going to be responsible for accounting for the funds. And believe me, you don't want to cross the Rotary Foundation about money. Okay. Um, not that I'm saying that you would want to cross them anyway, but uh, it's about money. It's our money. It's our club's money. It's other clubs' money. So it's a big deal. The host is going to execute the project. They uh, have to communicate with the international host and all of the host, all the partners in their uh, host uh, district and country. They're responsible for uh, reporting and accounting for the funds. And partners, which most of you will be, are uh, basically uh, when the call comes out, send the money in to send the money in. And most of you will send in to the Rotary Foundation. And you will notice, and I'll show you in a minute, uh, how that um, shows up. But if it goes through the Rotary Foundation, your club and your whoever the donor was gets foundation recognition points, Paul Harris points. If it goes straight to the bank accounts, you don't have to pay the surcharge, but you also don't get the, the Paul Harris. And uh, partners communicate, get their information from the host and the international host about what's going on. And likewise, because we are doing good in the world, wouldn't it be great to tell your club about the great things that are going on on that project in Kenya or that project in Nepal or whatever you're doing in Guatemala? It's really important. And tell your, your community, too. Oops, wrong, wrong direction. So where to begin? Um, three minutes. Okay. So... I would suggest you start with darn the Global Grant webpage, and we'll see if Rotary is awake tonight. It is, son of a gun. The Global Grant webpage. Okay. And and how do I normally find it? I do a Google search for RI Global Grants. And it gives you an idea of what they're for and so forth. And how to do it right, submitting a successful grant application, uh, monitoring and so forth, resources. And then you get down here to the bottom of the page. And notice every one of these is, is this uh, little blue thing. That means it's a link to something. So the first one, the very first one they have is Guide to Global Grants. Punch, punch that and read it. The next one is community assessment tools, because you're going to have to do that. Punch that and read it. And then uh, if you have a cooperating organization, microcredit projects, grant calculator, blah, 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 blah. And you go down here and uh, you ought to read this thing called areas of focus policy statements. Okay. So this is on the global grant website. Tom, we weren't seeing the website. Well, okay. Uh, suffice it to say, it's, it's there. 
um, unfortunately. So let me see if I can get. Okay, while he's working on that, yep. uh, are there any other questions that people have maybe for Bob that, that we didn't get to finish with? I have one. Yes. It, it, definition of international host versus host. If I initiate a project, but it's a Mexican project, I have a Mexican club who is uh, actually going to do the project, get the local contractors and so forth. But I'm nonetheless the key player in the project. Am I the international host or the host? The way it works is that the host is the club in where the project is to be conducted. Okay. So uh, even though you're here in America uh, and the project is from Juarez um, and they're a minor player, uh, they are still the host. Um, now, uh, and, and by the way, their district is the international host district and, and so forth. But that that's the way it works. Thank you. Uh, does anybody see an Excel spreadsheet on your screen? Yep. Yes. Darn. Okay, it's working. Uh, next thing I want to talk about, Rotary Matches uh, Club Funds. And I have put here an example from uh, one of Bob Reed's from Hobbs uh, projects in Kenya. Um, and you can read the title, it's Gender-Based Violence and the Positive Peace by Empowering uh, Women with HIV in Kenya. Uh, and you see here the host partner is uh, Kisumu Central and they put a hundred dollars in their district, didn't match it. Um, but they came up with $100 of DDF and, and so forth. What you notice here is the uh, uh, district matches uh, the clubs sometimes in this case, and Rotary matches uh, the district 80 cents on the dollar. So if you move down to the bottom, so Hobbs is the international host. They put up $13,000. The district matched it with uh, 10 5, and 80% of that was 8,400. And you notice over here, there's a subtotal of how much that contribution made. And then there's a 5% surcharge. And what that is, is to um, uh, cover the cost of, of running the money through the Rotary Foundation 5%. The good news is uh, that 5% also gets you Paul Harris credits. So um, the reason I add this with surcharge is so the club knows that, yeah, uh, they're committing to $13,000, but it's going to cost them $13,650. Uh, and you can kind of uh, go down uh, through this and, and see it. So um, what you're seeing here is that there's $19,000 of cash, or actually $19,300. And there's fifteen thousand uh, one hundred dollars of DDF, which results in a match from the Rotary Foundation of a little over twelve, for a forty-six thousand uh, five hundred dollar project. So this is how the matching goes. So this is one of the things that when you're working on your project, you're going to want to talk to the global grant chair and the foundation chair to see uh, how much you can do, because. Um, uh, I love cash. Uh, it's great to spend, but in this situation, what you really need is you need help from that DDF. And by the way, where does the DDF come from? From you. It comes from all of our members contributing to annual fund share. So okay. um, um, other okay. than that, I am done. I have another question. Um, where, where do we get to see club money amounts when? Um, I believe we have sent out to date copies uh, for district grants, I believe. Yes. Uh, what club money 
is at this point in time. Now, remember, people, some of your clubs have not sent in all of your money yet. If you have not sent in all of your money, we don't know what those totals really are. I would urge you to go back to your clubs, ask them to send the money in now. Don't wait till June. It's not gonna do any good. June, well, it, it does, but it takes an awful long time Then you get mad at us for obvious reasons. Um, start sending in the money that is stockpiled, say from December. A lot of clubs will send in in December, then they wait and send in in June. So what some of you have seen are low numbers. I've gotten calls, that's why I know. Um, but everybody should have seen sheets this week. We have kept Danette extremely busy, bless her heart. And that's the other thing. I would like to applaud Danette. Danette has been a godsend to the foundation for the last three years. There is not a time goes by that we cannot call and ask for help. And she's been wonderful. So anytime you see Danette at district conference, please pat her on the back, not too hard. Just pat her on the back and say thank you for what she does for the district. And and, and uh, your foundation chair, assuming you have one, and if you don't, please get one, um, uh, can see what your club is uh, giving with a report called the monthly contribution report. They should be able to see that. Uh, I check that uh, twice a day uh, in the morning and in the evening. So I, I keep track of the entire district. Um, and if you're having trouble, I can't find it. Uh, I don't understand what it means or, you know, pick one. Um, you know, just let me know. Uh, FT Walker one, Fort Walker one, at Comcast.net, um, and the, I'm I'm here to help you uh, do that. Right as of today, there are 12 clubs that have achieved $100 per capita of annual fund giving this year. 12. Usually, we have over 30, and um, um, and I understand. You know, we got three months to go and there will be a lot of money come in. Um, what Governor Linda is saying is that um, you're probably not making any money having the money in the bank. But what I will tell you is that the Rotary Foundation, especially when it comes to polio, they are every month or so, they're letting a 10, 20, 30, 50 million dollar contract um, with somebody to do something for the polio eradication effort. So um, if your members have contributed the hundred bucks for polio plus society or 25 or whatever the number is, please send it in because that money is being spent mm -hmm. uh, almost on a monthly basis. Yes, it is. All right, with that said, it is 7.28. Um, I'm sure you wouldn't mind being released from class two minutes early. I thank all of you for showing and coming and listening. Um, we appreciate everything you do in this thing called foundation. As I told you, what we do and by honoring our past, and embracing our, our future, we can evolve and keep Rotary not only relevant, but thriving through foundation grants. I believe that with all my heart, and I know you do too, because you wouldn't be here. So blessings to all of you. Be safe. And there's Holly the cat. That's the <laughs> Rotary cat for sure.
<laughs> <laughs> okay. Good night, all. Night. <laughs>